Hi, Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we're the Yahoo and the Tori YouTube channel. And we are appreciative that you are sitting here with us. We are, it is now a third day, second day? Third, third day. day. Third day. Third day on our Father's Creator's calendar, and uh, we appreciate your time. We thank you guys very, very much. Um, we're definitely getting into the book of Leviticus, and regarding the book of Leviticus, it's far more complex than the other books so, so far we've been into. We've had to put on our thinking cap, and we want to go, first and foremost, to, um, I want to give a little shout out here to Carla, and she is a, a dear sister of ours, and um, we uh, we really, really appreciate the feedback on this, and this is why it is... This is why there's always, everything has to be inside of two witnesses or you need to things in uh, quorums of people because it, if you have multiple brains and multiple people that are that are in this, we can figure this stuff out. And so um, this is from our dear sis, Carla, and um, she said, I found in Haggai chapter two, this is about pertaining to unclean meat, corpses, and carcasses, right? Where Yahoo is speaking to Haggai about this subject. So I want to go over this real quick first um, in the Sefer. So this is Haggai two. And um, again, thanks to Carla. In the fourth and twentieth day of the ninth month in the second year of Derivesh came the word of Yahuwah to Kegiah, the prophet, saying, Thus says Yahuwah Zevoth, Ask now the priest concerning the Torah, saying, If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, and with his skirt do touch bread, or pottage, or wine, or oil, or any meat, shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, No. Then Kagiah, if one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, It shall be unclean. Then answered Kagiah and said, so is, the pe so is this people, and so is this nation before me, says Yahuwah. And so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. All right, so that answers some stuff. We had questions. We didn't know, um, like, if you're if you're touching this stuff, I mean, you're, you're still going to be unclean. If you're touching a dead corpse, you're still going to be unclean. You're going to be unclean until you wash in the evening. All right, so I don't want to bore everybody, but anybody want to give this a stab with the top 10 commandments? And before we do that, for everybody here, this is the command we added yesterday. Um, return what is your neighbor's, right? And so we went over this in depth, in detail. You know, if you find something, whatever it is, you you, you need to return it, right? It, it would it's deceitful. It's and you know there are judgments and statutes for if you don't, but you shouldn't be in that don't part because you shouldn't always give it back. You should always volunteer um, stuff back. Don't don't um, covet what your neighbor has. All right, so I'm gonna give one of you. And we, you'll only get one, one per session. Who's going to represent the Oz Kingdom? Anybody want it. to try these? I'll All right, Caden, give be, me the Ten Commandments. Be fruitful. Got it. Multiply. Yep. Replenish the earth. Yep. Have dominion over it. And All right, that's it. I'm going to read them again. We'll go over it. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. And have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living thing. Five, have dominion over all living creatures. Six, the herb bearing every tree is for food. Man and women should build their own families. Master sin, every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Don't eat the blood. Do, and we added that at the bottom, right? Don't eat the fat. Yeah. At the bottom, that's 51. 51. 51, sorry. Yeah. Everyone. yeah, don't eat the fat. And so we're going to get into that in the next chapter as well. Um, all right, so let's get into our handy dandy split screen. How you guys doing today? Good, good. Great, great. Gentlemen, did you sleep well? Yeah. yeah. Everyone good? All right. Everyone all right? That's good. All right, handy dandy split screen is split screen is going, and we are into Leviticus seven, and we got to find this here, and we are about to begin. All right, so Leviticus seven, and you know, so basically, what guys go over? So Leviticus, let's see, Leviticus five. Had us dealing with, let's see, where is it at here? Actually, Leviticus 6 is, it was labeled at the top of that thing. Uh, the burnt offering. And what was the first one? What what offerings, what sacrifices have we been dealing with here? We've been dealing with the guilt offering, the grain offering, and sin offering. The sin offering. All right, so guilt, sin. Are we sure this is guilt and sin are the separate ones? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're separate. Okay, because they get into this. This is this also is a peace offering as well. Yes, so peace offerings. This is getting into 
why this is all happening. And it doesn't, we don't actually figure this out till the next couple chapters. I, I sped read through the next, so I'm actually a little ahead of you guys. So let's go into this and let's see what we can figure out. All right, so seven. Likewise, this is the Torah of the trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the ascending smoke offering, shall they kill the trespass offering, and the blood thereof shall he sprinkle round about upon the altar. Okay, now I had a couple questions on this. This says, uh, kill the ascending smoke. What does your guys say? Okay, in verse 2, that's w was way different. The guilt offering is slaughtered in the place where they slaughter the burnt offering, and its blood is sprinkled on the altar all around. This is Leviticus 7, right? Leviticus yeah. 7, too. Okay, so um, this is... That's not closer to the NIV. Uh, the guilt offering is to be slaughtered. Okay, so in the place where they kill, I'm looking, reading from the king up top left. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, shall they kill the trespass offering, and the blood thereof shall be sprinkled around. Shall he sprinkle around about upon the altar? Now it doesn't say. It doesn't say kill the so kill the ascending smoke offering. Okay, where they kill the ascending smoke offering. So okay. The same, like, kill the burnt offering. Right. So they're killing this thing right here. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out. All right, three, and he shall offer of it all the fat thereof, the rump and the fat that covers the inwards. Okay, so it's basically the same kind of a thing. And the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the call that is above the liver with the kidneys, it shall he take away. What does your say instead of call? Ours is Long a lobe. appendage on yeah. the liver. Okay. Long lobe of the liver. So and flanks is loins. Loins? Loins. So we're talking like the back haunches? Yeah, I think so. Um, we need to like get a uh, map of a whatever, like, yeah, yeah, what, figure yeah, out what this is. a map of the sheep or the bull. Yeah. Yep. And oh, a huge thanks to the Grand too because she uh, gave us a definition yesterday of what a carcass is. And a carcass is a dead, rotting corpse or something dead, right? And so um, it, it, it is something that is how you would define a carcass or at least how the people would. All right, and the priest shall burn them upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. It is a trespass offering. Every male among the priests shall eat thereof. It shall be eaten in the holy place. It is most holy. And the sin offering is, and the sin offering is, so is the trespass offering. There is one Torah for them. The priest that makes atonement therewith shall have it. And the priest that offers any man's burnt offering even the priest shall he have to himself the skin of the ascending smoke offering which he has offered. Okay, this one, when I was reading it out of the supper, I didn't understand what it was said. What did you guys say? Have himself the skin? And the Kohen who brings anyone's burnt offering, the skin of the burnt offering which he has brought is the Kohen's. It is his. So he gets to keep like the, oh, the, the, so like well, the fur. I think like, you know how, they, how you can make like blankets and carpet. Make, 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 make cowboy coffee. Or uh, not coffee. Yeah, I got coffee on the mind. Um, congratulations, Julie, too, for uh, day four of this. We had another gal who quit coffee. No headaches. So some people have headaches. Some people don't, um, which is really super good. Okay, so back to this. Um, what they call these down here are what they call cowboy carpet. And you take, like, the hide of a cow, and when it's dead, you salt it up, and then you spread it out, and you have to, there's a certain way to do it. And we had our, our friends over in Africa who actually told us how to do, I think, smaller animals, and she, like, puts a, a rock inside of it and spins the whole thing around to make it soft. There's crazy stuff you can do on this, but... Um, so this, the priest who offers a burnt offering for anyone may keep its hide for himself. How many hides... Are you going to want to have? I don't know. He's, he's going to have like an entire clothesline of these things by the end of the day. What would he do with the hides? Uh, make blankets, clothes uh, for his family. Shoes. Gloves, shoes, all this stuff. I don't know if they had shoes back then. Maybe. They probably had sandals. Moccasins. I sandals. assume they had like something. I mean, it talks about later throughout Deuteronomy where their shoes didn't wear out. So well, that's something. interesting. So before that, we have the hide, and the hide is not burned with this, right? Am I right? Yeah, right? He's like yeah. skins the animal and keeps all. Right. So this one is a little bit different because we have, they get to keep the hide. So uh, they would obviously have to process this or do something with it. All right. Um, nine. And all the oblation that is bacon in the oven and all that is dressed in the frying pan and in the pan shall be the priest that offers it. Now, what does it say dressed? Did you just say dressed? That is dressed in the frying pan on the king. Mm -hmm. Mine says baked. <clears throat> yeah, this one says baked in the oven or cooked. Every grain offering that is baked in the oven and all that is prepared in the stewing pot or on the griddle is the Kohanes who brings it. It is his. All right, so... Your guys sounds closer to the NIV. Which ones? There's. 
There's, yeah, so they're reading from the Hallelujah Scriptures, and um, this is the Sefer, and we got the King on the left, we got the NIV on the right, so we got all sorts, and then Nicole is using the Amplified, the Amplified Bible. All right, so we got like five versions here going with this. All right, and every oblation mingled with oil and dry shall all the sons of Aaron have, one as much as another. Okay, and this is the Torah of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer unto Yahuwah. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer it with a sacrifice of thanksgiving matzah cakes mingled with oil and matzah wafers anointed with oil and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour fried. Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering kamets with the sacrifice of the thanksgiving of his peace offerings. And what do you guys have for kamets? Leaven bread. Leaven bread. I think there's a definition right here on this one. Yeah. So kamets, fermented extortion kamets. That's what it says. Uh, I think it's just bread with leaven in it. Bread with leaven? Yeah, it says mm -hmm. leavened, leavened bread. bread. He's allowed leavened to eat bread. leavened bread. All right. And of it he shall offer one out of the whole oblation for a heave offering unto Yahuwah. And it shall be the priest that sprinkled, sprinkles the blood of the peace offerings. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a voluntary offering. It shall be eaten the same day that he offers his sacrifice, and on the morrow also the remainder of it shall be eaten. Now, unless people are sinning, the priests aren't going to be eating. I mean, if, if right. everybody, if nobody's living, in, if everybody was like holy, then the priests would starve to death because there wouldn't be all this food. I, mean, I, I don't think they're, I don't think they're consistently clean. I mean, they might save the animals for another day or something. Yeah, yeah but th when you're talking like... Uh, millions of people and you have i mean that's a lot of food process i mean that's a tremendous i mean there's going to be like if you had an entire if you had a family right you know one person in that family commits a sin one type of sin and the other are you going to do they all just bring one bowl for their sin offering or they each bring their own bowl yeah it'd probably be at the age of responsibility however they were doing it you know if they were just a child and the child's doing evil or something of the sort they probably do that but i would say if it's going to be a family thing for sure and then uh, I, I don't i don't know it is probably you know if you're rich you would you would do lots of rams or something of the sort or if you're poor you just have the turtle doves but I mean, if, some flour if you're super poor and you continue living in sin and you just make yourself super poor because you're buying turtle doves all the time it just seems like a, a, a bad, vicious cycle it's a bad investment yeah it's a, well it's not a bad I investment mean, but it's a it's a bad action to have to create that investment we shouldn't be sinning. All right. Uh, 17. Uh, shall be eaten. But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be eaten at all on the third day, it shall not be accepted. Neither shall it be imputed unto him that offers it. It shall be an abomination, and the soul that eats it shall bear his iniquity. And also, I mean, other than Yah striking you down, how would you know this, right? I mean, you would you would have to physically know this. If somebody, like, gave you something or um, you didn't know, you snuck the food in, you accidentally did it, uh, you know, I don't know if Yah's going to curse you or, or how exactly you would you would bear that iniquity. If you didn't know it, it would, you'd have to, you know, sacrifice for that because it's unknown sins. All right. And the flesh that touches any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire, and as for the flesh, all that be cling shall eat thereof. All right, so there's that thing again. And the flesh that touches any unclean thing shall not be eaten. So that is talking about you have a priest that goes in. He washes himself up completely, sprinkles blood on the altar. They're, they're all, at that point, they're all cling. And at some point, what would, what would they touch? How would you touch something unclean? How would that happen if you were in the courtyard? Maybe you, something after the third day? I don't know, whatever, like a vulture came down and landed on your kill or something, right? Right out yeah, of nowhere. Yeah, what are they doing with that? Because there's a lot of killing. I wonder if like, the birds like swoop, swarming them the entire time. I don't know. It, they're definitely down in the jungle that happens. I don't know about out in the desert or wherever they're at. I assume there can be birds, like especially vultures. So if they see an unclean bird and it lands on your, your holy meat, you're just done. It's over. Toss it. You wouldn't even, you would be, you'd probably drag it out of that temple courtyard um, or wherever it is, I mean, it would be unclean. So you'd have to watch for birds. Maybe they had to There's like probably like a pile of Levites. Maybe y'all had a protective over it, so the birds couldn't go and attack it. Maybe could be. I think there's just a lot of Levites around, and they probably just wear like shoe off birds and stuff. They're the. It could be like the tennis games when they where they're doing it. They have the little boys or little girls that sit there and run across and grab the balls. And they oh, do yeah, it, they yeah. like the little thing. Maybe they have like guys just petitioned and set up on each side. Right, and they run, the same chase guy the down, bird. go chase yeah. it away. Yeah. <laughs> 
they're running away. A so. Fifty-yard dash across the courtyard. <laughs> yeah, quick, the birds are coming. But it would be you would think that with all this killing, uh, the birds would be like surrounding them. It just it would seem like it would be creepy. It, it happens down here. Like, I'm sure it would be like the camp of death or something. With all it the birds would be. Around. Yeah. All right. So twenty. But the soul that eats of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertains unto Yahuwah, having his uncleanness upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. So this is yet another thing right here, right? And so if who, who's eating these offerings, right? The soul that eats the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto Yahuwah, having his uncleanness upon him. So what again defines uncleanness? How would this guy, how would he become unclean? If he touched a carcass... Um, there's a lot of ones we haven't got to well, I mean, yet. Right. Yeah, there's the ones. I mean, what if you have like a skin lesion? That's oh, yeah, so you're unclean. Unclean. Right, you're, you're unclean. So that would be, you know, the priest would have to be, you know, <laughs> no zits, right? If you have a zit, you're probably going to have an affliction on that. You're going to be unclean according to Yah's stuff, right? And that's a that's an abscess. Um, it might be a tiny one, but it's still some sort of an abscess. And I think that, I, I think Yah wants cling hands right like what i what i was reading what i've been figuring out or trying to figure out here um is that yah is 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 we don't understand it because we're like he's really he's really super clean he wants his hand, he wants us to have super clean hands but then what we don't understand is how he, he you sprinkle blood everywhere and it's like oh that seems like that's not exactly sanitary because blood gets sticky and i, I maybe maybe we're over uh thinking the entire sprinkling the blood maybe it's not like Maybe it's like uh, just little itty bitty sprinkles and not like a paintbrush that you just throw the blood. It just throws it everywhere. I, I don't know exactly the process of it, but y'all want you to completely cling up and then he, he's touching blood to their ears and their, their, their body. And so they, they have blood on them. So this is yet more reason that life is in the blood. Like there's something about the blood that we should absolutely not drink. And um, I got to thinking about this the other day. I got to thinking about the whole process of dying, right? When you die, if you go to an embalmer, they will. the first thing they do is they, they tap into your vein and they suck your blood out and they, they dump it down the drain, right? It goes into like the city. Um, most of it goes into the city sewers. You, so they just, they take gallons of blood out of people or wherever. Well, I don't know how much blood is there. But I just think that I don't know, you know, because there's rules for blood. And one of them is that we need to cover it up with dirt. We don't, we, we shouldn't, it's there's something special about it. So as far as just us having our bodies drained and dumping that, that blood along with everything else, I, I don't know if that's right, but I guess those things we won't know. Anyway, side note, um, 20, are we on 20 shook? Well, I'm 21. 21. All right. Come on, sidekick. Let's get it up. All right. Moreover, the soul shall touch, shall touch any unclean thing. As the uncleanness of man, or any unclean beast, or any abominable unclean thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings which pertain unto Yahuwah, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. These people need to be completely clean, right? Yeah, they, y'all wants his people to Okay, I want to read that verse again because it does say swarming creature, where yours didn't. Okay. So, and, and when a being who touches that which is unclean, of the uncleanness of man, or the uncleanness of beast, or of any unclean swarming creature, and shall eat the flesh of the peace offering that belongs to Yahuwah, that being shall be cut off from his people. So yours says swarming creature? Yes. Yeah, so it could be. So there's any, the bird. Yeah, well, well, not even that. Um, you, you would be like, there's a lot of bugs that are like a fly. Mm -hmm. yeah, if a they're, fly they're got on that, that would be, a, flies are definitely unclean. Those things are filthy, disgusting things. So if a fly lands on your, your yourself, if you're sitting around, I mean, how do you deal with that? Are we the only people down here that have mass amounts of flies? We have like fly season. Like they come in mass and it's like we never think they're going to end. And it's like the plagues of Egypt. And then they kind of like just die off. And there's only like just a few of them. But there is fly season <laughs> for real down March, here. April, May. Yeah, March, April, and May down <laughs> here is, is fly season. And so, um, yeah, just all, I, that's all I do is all day long is shoot flies out my house. Um so anyway, that, that's something to, to understand that if, if this guy is sitting in the middle of a sacrifice and a fly comes down on him and he notices that he's unclean, according to it. So he would have to be like check himself out like immediately because if he eats this stuff, he's going to be he's going to be in trouble. I mean, if your soul shall be cut off from his people, that's that's not a good thing. That's not what we're that's after. Serious deal. That's not good. All right. Eli, is it 21 or 22? 22. 22. All right, Cookie, let's get it going. All right. And Yahoo has spoken to Moshe saying. Speak unto the children of Yashrael, saying, Ye shall eat no manner of fat, of ox, or of sheep, or of goat. Okay, so here's a command. Here we go, no fat. 
Yeah, no fat. And it's very important because Jaw's always taking the fat and sizzling that stuff up for his sweet savor. Okay, so this should be under the do not eat fat commands. Nicole? Got it. Perfect. Thank you. What a good wife. I'm so blessed. I really am. All right. Um, so, yeah, don't eat the fat. 24. And the fat of the beast that dies of itself and the fat of that which is torn with beasts may be used in any other use, but ye shall in no wise eat of it. All right. What are we dealing with here? So the fat of a dead body and the fat of which is torn is used for any purpose, but you do not eat it. So what else do you use fat for? I don't know. We have Evil Eric. Like, he cooks the fat up. Yeah, I but know, it's but still like, food. Well, still food. You make, can you make like soap or something? That wasn't at one point you made like soap. So if you make the soap, if this thing is, is uncling, this, this animal is uncling. So you don't eat the fat of the beast. Like you can't eat it, but you can do something else with it. You make you can make soap out of fat, right? Yeah, you can. And you can make candles too. Candles, okay. So there, so Candles there, was, about you, there were some uses for the fat. I don't know the process of that, but I mean, it can be great. But he said you can use it for other purposes, just don't eat the fat. So this is, this is, yeah, this is interesting, though. I mean, so this is where I believe this, this is, is where this animal. So if this animal is torn with torn to shreds, we would be uncling by touching this animal. So by default, if we are going to take the fat off this beast, we're going to be uncling regardless. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there is a a system for being unclean. I mean, it's like a normal thing to be unclean. Like you will wash your neck good the next it's, day. It is. It's, it, it's, it is un. It is normal to be unclean as long as you're not dealing with the ceremonial stuff. If you're attempting to be a priest of Yah, and you have a fly land on you, it says you know flying insects or of unclean swarming creatures. Swarming creatures. Um, no. Jerry, knock it off. That's Jericho. He's just real loud. He's crazy. All right. All right, let's keep on rolling. Eli. I think this was for a clean beast as well. Like, you couldn't, like, this was only you could use the fat of a clean beast. I don't think you want to use any fat of the nasty beast because he says here you can uh, do not eat the fat of a bull, sheep, or goat. And then he goes on saying you can use the fat of the dead body. So I think this is for clean animals only. You can use the fat of. That is interesting. I don't know if that's true, but that, I mean, that is, that is interesting. That would make sense, though. That would make sense. I mean, we're not supposed, I think, you know, we get sick. I mean, we shouldn't be touching, like, filthy pigs. Pigs are. And you're not supposed to cut a pig, take its fat, and use it. Uh, here it just says, a uh, bull, sheep, and goat. And by our knowledge of the Torah, we know that is a clean animal. Those yeah. are all clean. But at the same time, if it's a dead carcass and it's been shredded by another animal, it's still going to be unclean. Right. And it so, would be un not consumable for us. We would not right. want to consume that. All right. Let's roll. 25. 25. All right. Thanks, Cookie. For whosoever eats the fat of the beast, of which men offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah, even the soul that eats it shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, you shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be fowl or of beast in any of your dwellings. Don't right. eat the blood. 26. Yeah, 26. It goes back into the don't eat the blood. Mm -hmm. Ms. Nicole. All righty. I figured. Whatsoever soul it be that eats any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. All right. So this is this goes into a lot of the, lot of the blood stuff, right? How would you, what, how would you eat blood? Uh, maybe uncooked meat, although it's not cooked all the way. Uncooooked meat. I mean, I guess you could just drink blood straight, but that's not good. That's well, the, the, here it goes to this. If if an animal, if it's dead and you're still touching the blood, are we unclean? Are cooks unclean? I mean, blood touches you probably. I mean, I, I don't know. Life is in the blood. So yeah, pro probably can touch you. Probably so I don't think when you package meat, there's still going to be blood in every package of meat. There's like no way they can actually get all the blood out unless yeah, they cook no, it right then and then and then and when, you, when, it. when you cut up an animal, you get blood all over you, you get stuff all over you, you're pretty much, you're but, blood. And, and you're like cooking as well, there's also blood. Pagiaia. If it's in its skirt or in its garment, is that the same? It's, it's, it's not, it's, anything he touches with his skirt or garment becomes unclean, is what that said. Is yeah, so I think you're unclean. If you're like sitting there cooking meat and there's blood all over it, I think you're unclean. Huh. Yeah, that that could be. Um, again, we we're we're just speculating, folks. So we're just we're just thinking this stuff through with you guys. So um, I don't know. All right, where are we at? Twenty eight. Yep. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, "Speak unto the children of Yisrael, saying, He that offers the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto Yahuwah shall bring his oblation unto Yahuwah of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. His own hands shall bring the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire, the fat with the beat, the breast. It shall he bring." That the breast may be waved for a wave offering before Yahuwah. Okay, so we're talking like a chest cavity area, right? Mm -hmm. We're talking like the ribs, I would imagine. Yeah, I would assume so. But I mean, it's, it can't, I don't know, he's, it's got to be a handful of stuff. He can't wave a cow's breast or anything. This thing would be huge. Well, if you just cut up a cow, like, uh, you have a, if you cut the leg off, all you have left is a spine. 
and then just the ribs, so. Right, but that's, that's still right. heavy. Yeah. I mean, and so on a ram, it I think. Takes a couple of them to wave it. Maybe a couple of them to wave it. I, don't, I just don't, I wish, I wish we had, could actually see the ceremony go down. I wish we could talk to a real priest. Yeah. Yeah, real priest, I don't think we have any that not not any uh, right now yeah and i uh, there's no other way to figure this out i don't think we just gotta wait for yah yahushua all right 31 yikes and the priest shall burn the fat upon the altar but the breast shall be aaron's and his sons so aaron gets the ribs yep. yeah he gets he gets, he, he gets the tasty he ribs gets the best part yeah, he gets he gets really good. I don't know. I think there's like better parts, like the yeah. prime rib stuff. Where does that where does that come from? Ribs. Oh, prime rib. Prime rib. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a dummy. What's wrong with me? <laughs> prime rib. It's not full IQ here, folks. All right, let's go on. All right, thirty two. And the right shoulder shall ye give unto the priest for heave offering of the sacrifices of your peace offering. He among the sons of Aaron that offers the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. And again, Mine says the right thigh. Right thigh. Well, I mean, technically I mean, on an animal, that'd probably yeah, be... Yeah, because you're standing... Yeah. I mean, if they it were... It could be either. If they were standing up on their backside and walked around like humans, then... That'd just be weird. That, so yours says what? Thigh. The right thigh. So it's the IV, but so the right really shoulder. King says shoulder. Does the, is the back legs by the rear, is it a shoulder as well? Uh, I've, never, I've never considered it a shoulder. Uh, yeah, I've always called it like the legs and arms. I don't know. It's just probably a human thing, but it's probably just legs. A rump. Thanks, Nicole. All right, 34. Or 33. 34. 34. Cookie, you're getting behind, bro. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because yep. we're All right. still going over it. All right. For the wave breast and the heave shoulder have I taken of the children of Yashrael from off the sacrifices of their peace offerings and have given them unto Aaron the priest and unto his sons by a statute forever from among the children of Yashrael. I wonder if Aaron's, Aaron's people are all fat. Huge. I don't know. I was thinking they eat a lot, but they need to do a lot of work to work this off. Well, they're working. They're working that really slaughter. Hot in the temple. Imagine the gear they got on, all the long sleeves. All Dude, it's the, a lot they of work. Be, they, gotta up be, animals. they gotta be sweating all day long. And I mean, they gotta go from a live animal to where they have to kill it, cut it up, cut it, cook it, cook it. Yeah, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of work. And I mean, there's a lot of other things they have to do. They have to, there's others that sacrifice. There's others that are like probably guarding the place. Most of these are small animals, anyways. So they're like because they're like one year old. They're like you know, out blemished. They're small animals. So maybe the baby Levites, they were uh, they were the ones cleaning up the blood everywhere. Somebody's got to clean up the blood. Blood's everywhere. I mean, I don't know how you could do this without yeah, I blood. Think there was a I think somebody was talking about like a drain or something on it. There's drains, but there's still blood everywhere. The drain's still got to be clean. Break out can't, the pressure washer. Yeah, you can't leave this blood out there. Yah's not going to allow like clotted blood to sitting around his place, right? Wherever the piles of blood goes, I don't like know that where That place had to stay clean all at all times. Like there's someone cleaning there, someone right behind it with Levitical the janitorial up. service. Yeah. All right, we're in 35? Mm-hmm. Uh, now, yeah, 35. This is the portion of the anointing of Aaron and of the anointing of his sons out of the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire in the day when he presented them to minister unto Yahuwah in the priest's office, which Yahuwah commanded to be given them of the children of Yashrael in the day that he anointed them by his statute forever throughout their generations. This is the Torah of the ascending smoke offering of the oblation and the sin offering and of the trespass offering. And of the consecrations and of the sacrifice of the peace offerings. All right, what does your guys say? Because I know those are all going to be different. Okay, this is the Torah of the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, and the ordinations and the peace offering. All right, so guilt offering is trespass offering. So the first one is, is smoke offering. Is that burnt offering? Burnt offering. Okay, so burnt offering. Of the oblation, what's the next grain one? Grain offering. Great. Okay, grain offering is the oblation. Sin offering is your same Sin as offering, sin offering. And trespass is guilt, guilt offering. Guilt, guilt offering. And of the consecrations? Ordin peace offering. Ordinations. Ordinations of the peace offering. Of the sacrifice of the peace offerings. Okay, consecrations. Okay, 38. Which Yahuwah commanded Moshe in Mount Sinai in the day that he commanded the children of Yashrael to offer their oblations unto Yahuwah in the wilderness of Sinai. All right, so there we go. Um, we don't have any commandments, but we do have um, supporting, commandments. supporting supporting verses for the commandments, and which is don't eat the blood. Don't drink blood. Never, ever, ever, ever drink the blood. And so... Um, don't eat the fat. Yeah, and don't eat the fat. Never, 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 never eat the fat. There's something about the fat. And it's obviously, um, you know, when you when you look at fat, it's it can't be healthy. I mean, there's something really nasty with it. All right, so I think that is it. I think we will let everybody go their way. Everybody who has stuck this far out and listened to this all the way, we thank you. We know your time is precious. We we highly, highly value every one of you guys. We appreciate you guys sitting around our table and chatting it up with us and 
Um, Carla, thank you for putting that uh, verse out there for us. So that would have taken us a while to get to that and figure this out. And um, we, we have a very good tribe. And this tribe is not just my local people, but is all of you guys out there. So a big shout out, a big old grizzly bear hug to everybody. Um, I do a high five, but I still I can't do a high five yet because I still only have like eight fingers completely. But they're healing up really well. So big, we'll have to stick with a grizzly bear hug. All right, everybody. Thank you guys very, very much. Gentlemen, do you have anything to add to this? Anything uh, of value? Nothing yep. besides have a good day. Don't eat the fat. It's obviously uh, it's not good. It's just there's obviously something wrong with it. If you didn't want to do something else with it, and not eat it. So read your Bibles. Uh, have a good day. Yep. All right. All right. Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Much love. We're